what you do for psychosis, and then that's been pretty much the, the dominant model. I want to say something about the relationship between cognitive therapy for psychosis and medications. Now, most of the studies I was talking about are studies of people that were also taking medications, but they had a lot of symptoms that medications didn't control, which is actually pretty common uh, you know, with people with psychosis, that the medications are only partly effective or for some of them ineffective. So, so cognitive therapy was helpful with people with those kind of issues. But there was, there was already been one study done on people that were just starting to have psychotic symptoms. They were considered, you know, they hadn't required hospitalization or anything yet, but they were starting to have some psychotic symptoms, and they just used cognitive therapy with no medications, and they had good results with that group. So, so the typical client for cognitive therapy for psychosis. Oh, is my sound going in and out? Okay. Um, the typical client is on medication but has significant symptoms that, I'm not sure what's happening. Significant symptoms that the medications aren't controlling. Um, and it's, uh, it's also common, though, as a result of the therapy that maybe people can end up using uh, fewer medications. And that can be important because there is data out there that says that our clients in the mental health system, public mental health system, are typically dying 25 years earlier than average and often from medication-related kinds of conditions. And so anything we can do to help people be healthy with lower doses of medications is helpful. And cognitive therapy has also been used commonly with people that refuse medications. And there's no research studies on that, but there's quite a few case studies that show it's been effective and for people like that, at least at times. Um, then I want to also say a few things about the relationship between cognitive therapy and the, the whole medical model of, of schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. And when I use the phrase medical model, I'm going to be talking about the more extreme version of it. That's kind of like the model that the head of the American Psychiatric Association referred to when he said that we've kind of unfortunately shifted from the biopsychosocial model to more of a bio-bio-bio model. Uh, I mean, the mental health system has kind of like had this model of schizophrenia as a lifelong disease that's caused by genetics or some kind of brain disease. And there's really no medical model for how schizophrenia, once it's established, could go away. But we actually know from looking at outcome studies that people do recover. And even people who appear the worst um, most often recover, at least somewhat, with, with some percentage recovering fully. The World Health Organization just recently came out with a study that even for people that were still ill after 15 years, when they looked at them for 25 years, after 10 more years, quite a few people had recovered. So just because somebody's been in the system for 15 years doesn't mean they're doomed to not recover either. So really a lot of the statistics about schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders is really way off from what the medical model would have you expect. Like if the medical model was accurate, you'd expect that recovery rates would be way higher now than when medications were first introduced. And you'd expect that recovery rates would be much higher in the developed countries where we have lots of medication than in third world countries where they don't use much. And when people did recover, you'd expect them to be the ones that did the best jobs of staying on their medication. But instead what you find is that recovery rates haven't gone up and sometimes appear to be going down. There's two World Health Organization studies that showed that recovery is almost twice as likely in third world countries than in the more developed countries. And long-term outcome studies usually show that those that fully recovered are more, most often off medication, such as a recent 15-year um, outcome study that showed that the recovery rate was eight times higher among people who'd gotten off medications. Now, I'm not going to try to go into a lot more detail about what should or shouldn't be the role of medications. I mean, that's a whole other workshop in itself. There is a book out in the lobby that's called Healing, Healing Schizophrenia, Using Medication Wisely, and it really goes into that subject in depth if people are interested in that. But I'm just trying to make the point that if we're going to really try to help people recover, 
we need to step back and take a broader look at what's going on um, than just the medical model. Um, and we, we really need a much broader look. And the cognitive approach to psychosis um, does take a much wider approach than the medical model version. And unlike the medical model, it has real specific ideas about how people recover. It sees people as capable of collaborating in their own recovery. I'm still not sure what's going on with this thing. Um, so many people learning about um, cognitive therapy for psychosis for the first time find that learning about the different way of thinking about psychosis is harder than learning the actual uh, steps of the therapy. So. Um, you might notice as I'm talking today that some of the things I'm saying will really kind of like contradict what you've heard before about psychosis. And I just encourage you to kind of like, um, you know, take in what I'm saying and um, notice what your questions are. And then when we do have time for questions, ask some of them because it's really good to um, look at what some of some of uh, these issues are because, like I said, that's some of the hardest part is just learning the new ways of thinking about it. So I just want to kind of like start by talking a little about what the heck is psychosis. Um, and this is a definition from a, from a medical dictionary, and it's uh, a severe mental disorder with or without organic damage, characterized by derangement of personality and loss of contact with reality. And, causing deterioration of normal social functioning. Well, really, the essence of that um, definition is that it has to do with being out of touch with reality. I mean, derangement basically means uh, disorientation. Um, so, so essentially, it's about loss of contact with reality. So I, I have a question for you guys. Um, how many of you are totally in touch with reality? <laughs> Okay, so we, we've got one person there, I see. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a like grandiose delusion. <laughs> um, but since, since none of us are really um, in, totally in touch with reality, does that mean we should all say that we're at least a bit psychotic? Yeah. Um, the cognitive perspective is that we're all at least a bit out of touch with reality, and, and nobody's totally out of touch. Everybody's at least in touch with something. And we just define psychosis as the point where that out of touchness begins to appear severe. Um, or, you know, maybe it puts us in conflict with the wrong people. So it's a matter of degree that we all have these kind of problems, but um, that, that it's a matter of degree. And also, it's an interesting question who judges what being in touch with reality is? If none of us are flawlessly in touch with reality, how can we judge? Um, Who's out of touch with it? I mean, sometimes people are out of touch with what we think of as reality, but maybe they're more in touch with what's actually going on at some other level. Cognitive therapy kind of like sees it all on a continuum, like where all mental problems have some kind of out of touch with reality component. So like a person with anorexia who thinks they're fat, you know, there's sort of an out of touch with reality idea. Or a person who has a panic attack and thinks that they're dying or um, a depressed mother who's taking care of her children under very difficult circumstances, and yet she thinks she's worthless. Um, psychosis is just distinguished by the extreme and socially unacceptable nature of the interpretations that are made. And, and also, the cognitive therapist doesn't have to assume that he or she is totally in touch with reality, because the focus instead is on a collaborative investigation, you know, a dialogue where the client has something helpful to contribute, as well as the therapist. Um, dialogue's one thing that usually breaks down by the time somebody gets kind of far out enough to be labeled psychotic. Um, and that breakdown in dialogue also happens on a continuum.